rolling, people. We're rolling. Who am I kidding? There's no one here except me, so. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jasmine Rosette and today we're gonna to be doing a get ready with me. And obviously by the title of the video, we're gonna be talking about some riveting stuff. Before we get into that, if you haven't already, please do subscribe so you can stay up to date on everything that I'm doing. And if you like any part of this video, please do give me a thumbs up. So without further ado, let's get into the video, girl. Thought I would bring you in a little bit closer you can see what I'm doing better but I just finished priming let's talk about what not to say to people of color obviously I'm gonna speak from my experience as a black Latino female I can't speak from other people of colors experiences because I I don't know that world really well I only know like what it's like to be black. Have people say things who are not of color that are just really? Like, did you really need to say that type of thing? So things that I've kind of heard that I am just gonna list out a little bit. Oh, it's because, oh, sorry. Oh, it's because you're black or you know I have black friends. That's not okay to say to a person of color at all. It kind of tells me that you are a little uncomfortable being around someone who's of color, that you haven't been around people of color often, and you have to continuously point it out and like make jokes about it. And it's just like, bro, I'm a person too. I get that like on the outside, I definitely look different because my pigmentation is a lot darker than yours, but it doesn't really constitute for you to just be like, oh, you have big lips because you're black. You have a big butt because you're black. Or you talk like this because you're black. No, it's not. And I've definitely corrected people in the past. Oh, it's, you know, because you're black. And I'm like, no, it's not. Because I've seen white people who also have big lips, who also have big butts, who have certain features that are similar to mine. And also, you never really hear a, a black person saying, oh, because you're white, because you're white all the time and focusing on your whiteness. And I just always find it so interesting when people always kind of have point out your blackness to you or your whatever you are as a person of color, they always try to point it out to you. And it's just, okay, cool, awesome, great. I've even gotten, <laughs> been in situations where people are like, you know, um, you're like the cool black person in, in, the, in, in this whatever situation. Why can't I just be a cool person? Why do I have to be a cool black person? Like, why do you have to like point that out? And it's like when people who are not of color point those type of things out, I'm just kind of like, are you trying to show, like tell me that like, this is your way of saying that you see me? What's really going on here? Like, I just don't really understand the point. I'm just like, it's just not okay to like say things of, oh, it's because you're black or just continuously pointing out my my blackness. I always find that like people of color kind of make the joke in a place where they're the minority so that like you don't have to acknowledge it. And so it's like you understand that like I recognize I'm different. You now know it's pointed out that I am different than you just based on my skin tone. And so I'm gonna make this joke to kind of clear the air to acknowledge my racial difference <laughs> or ethnic difference whatever you like want to call it um type of thing and so and that can definitely come off as you know hypocritical a little bit and i realized like based on a recent conversation that people of color need to stop doing that like we need to stop making those type of jokes when we're and it's not really even offensive jokes but it's a joke of hey i acknowledge this about me and know that like i'm the only one who's like this and it's definitely not okay on our part but i feel like where it's coming from for us is is to kind of acknowledge that like there's a difference between us like there's a difference that like for me to acknowledge yes in front of all of you people who are not of color and i am the only one in the room who is i understand that i am black and that you are not and this joke is to or it's not even a joke. It's more of like a light hearted comment that I make. Yes, I understand 
because I am black. Cause it's like, I've been in a situation where someone has explained about my culture to me. And then I kind of finish off. I already knew that because I'm black and I'm very involved with like what's going on in my culture. But I would say it in a more like lighthearted kind of joking way of just like, I get it. It's because I'm black. I understand. But it's also like, that's not cool either. I don't know. I don't feel like it's okay for people who are not of color to kind of point out being like, oh, it's because you're the black person or it's because you're black for this reason or, you know, you're that black person of this and that's why they think you're cool. Like I've gotten comments like that and I'm just like, it's it's not okay to say to a person of color, reg like regardless, because you're putting me into a box, you're putting me into a category to kind of fit your needs to, so that you can kind of understand better who I am without really acknowledging me as a person first you only acknowledge my race first and then think of me as a per person second which is not okay and not like not the point like yes i am a person of color <laughs> i get that more than anyone i live in my skin every single day and i live with black privilege every single day whereas white privilege like works for you in a lot of situations but for me, it's it doesn't. <laughs> I also think like things that are not okay to say to a black person are the N-word. I remember in high school, I had two guys who I considered friends who were like, oh, is it okay if I call you the N-word? They were not black. And I was like, no, that's extremely racist. And I said that around when I was like 16, 17 years old. But I'm just thinking like, why would you ever, as a person who's not of color, want to say, like, not of color, because they were of color, who is not my race, want to say something that is like a racial slur to me. Like, that's not cool. Also, when people like listen to a song and it has the N word in it, and you know, they're not of color, they're not like black, they don't walk around with black privilege, and they say it, like in a song and then a black person is in the room and then the song comes on and then they say it and then they turn to you and they're like oh i'm sorry like i didn't mean to like you know is it cool that i say it and it's just like no no it's not i feel like if you are not black and you don't like you shouldn't say it at all because you don't understand you don't understand the depth of what that word is for people who are black like you can see it you can hear it in songs but you're never really going to understand it because you're not black so you never have had that word used against you in a racial like an aggressive racially charged way and like i have like i have been like in those situations where people have called me that and it's like not a good thing they're not black and they've said things like that to me it's an awful situation where you have to be in a situation and someone literally doesn't like you <clears throat> and they're saying like racially charged things against you just because of the color of your skin like you just walk into a building or you walk on to a form of public transportation and someone says this to your face and it's like totally off the cuff you're not even saying anything like you're not even doing anything besides existing and people say this <clears throat> to you like who have some sort of like grudge against you or whatever and it's just like well damn <laughs> like this is an awful situation and it's horrible to be in but i just feel like if you're not a person who's black you should never say that word that is my opinion i don't care if you are married to a person who is black or if your cousin is black if you do not walk around with skin like mine I don't think you're allowed to say it. And also those people who like do the whole black face or they like tan so much that they look black and they're like, oh, I think I can get away with it. If you know in your heart that you ain't black, then don't be saying that word because you don't understand that like the N word nigger is means ignorance. Like slaves, like slave masters called black people niggers because 
it was a way to identify them and put them down and be super condescending and being like, you're an ignorant person. You're less than a human. You're a piece of crap. And then black people started to take ownership of that word and saying, nigga. And as a way to like take ownership of that word so that it doesn't hurt themselves. And they call each other that as a reminder that it's like, they cannot use this word against me to continue to push me down. So like, if you don't fully understand the depth of what I just said, and it doesn't emotionally resonate with you, just never say the word. Even if it does emotionally resonate with you and you do understand, and you are not a person of color, my color, don't say the word. I don't care if you're married to someone who's black. I don't care if like you you know, have a black friend, a black cousin, or if another black person said it was okay for you to say, because another black person would be like, it's not, so don't say it. And so, and that's how I feel. Like, I'm just like, don't say it. If it's in a song, I don't care. It's not meant for you to say as a person who's not black. Non-black people should never say the N-word and they should never ask a black person if they can call them the N-word. It's super, offensive i don't like it i don't think it's like it's not productive like what's the point why would you want to call me that why can't you just call me my name which in my case is jazz or jasmine like you don't gotta call me the n-word you don't gotta do me like that another thing is i feel like there is like a problem that's kind of arising People who are not black are recognizing that like oppression still exists for people who are black. Like the whole Black Lives Matter movement, people are more aware of it than ever. They're realizing that like black people can be brutally attacked at any moment, that they're underpaid, they're undervalued, they're not appreciated as much. And we are we are making ways to improve that, which is great. But I feel like people are getting stuck into this pattern of, you know, I acknowledge that I have white privilege. Like when people who are white say that, I'm like, that's great. But at the same time, you can't give up your white privilege. When people who are white acknowledge that they have white privilege, I'm like, that's great that you know that, but what are you going to do actively with that information? I feel like it's getting into this like transition of, we're just talking about it, which is, you know, there's like, there's definitely like goodness coming from just talking about it. And I'm very appreciative that people acknowledge who are white, their white privilege. Like that's important. I feel like that is huge. That was something that like we never got, like, you know, even 10 years ago, like this is very recent. And people are kind of speaking up of being like, I don't see any people of color on this set or, you know, like we're seeing it in ads and like beauty campaigns and in movies. Like we're starting to see like that kind of celebrated of like, oh, like there's some action. But I feel like the action is mainly coming from people who are of color or like there is a little bit of action because they're realizing that like, oh, it's not okay to continuously like bash on people of color and not include them, <laughs> but we have to be like mindful of that. But I feel like a lot of people get into this habit of just saying like, oh, I acknowledge that I have white privilege. But I'm like, when push comes to shove, say I'm in a car and I get pulled over, obviously I'm black. Obviously I'm a person of color who has dark skin. And with everything that's going on with cops and black people getting pulled over, it is very scary. So if a person who's white is in the passenger seat and all they do is nothing, while a cop being racially offensive or doing the things that we see in the news outlets all the time to black people and they don't do anything, what is you saying that you have white privilege doing for me in that moment? You're just stating it, but you're not doing anything for me. I am actually scared in that position. You might be scared, but your life will probably go on. Who knows if mine will? I'm not saying that like a white person needs to jump in front of a bullet for me, but I'm saying when push comes to shove 
and you're in a situation where something that's racially charged is happening, are you just stating that you have white privilege or are you being like proactive with your actions? Because I feel like I don't want us to get stuck in this thing of, oh yeah, I acknowledge, I acknowledge. And I'm like, great, you acknowledge. What else is that? What else is that doing? You're just stating you have white privilege. I can state all day I have black privilege. That's not doing anything. That's not helping anybody. You can state what kind of privilege you have, but if you don't do anything with it, what's the point in stating it in the first place? That's kind of my, that's my stance on it. I don't know, maybe I'm being like a little bit too pessimistic about it, but I kind of feel like we get into, I feel like some people are getting into that like habit of just like, oh, just saying something is gonna be enough. <laughs> but if you're like, if you really stand arms in arms with us, saying something sometimes doesn't do anything. Like when people, cause like, there are still gonna be people who act out in violence towards people of color for no reason at all. And I'm not saying all cops are bad, but something that I kind of realized that really put me onto the Black Lives Matter movement, because I wasn't directly affected. Like, I live in a predominantly white culture, yes, but I see that on the news, but I don't feel, I didn't feel at that time that I was directly affected. Until I remember seeing this tweet, and then I was in a situation where a cop was following me. But I remember seeing this tweet where the whole Blue Lives Matter was happening, and I definitely rolled my eyes on, on that on purpose, because this tweet said, you can take off your uniform and no one would know that you're a cop, but I cannot take off my blackness. I live in this skin every day. And I was so moved by that. I was like, wow, I didn't understand it until someone had to like literally put it in perspective of saying like, yeah, we, we as people of color, like we can't exactly take off our blackness. We can't. Like people come up to me and they'll like even talk black or they'll talk really sassy like an angry black woman and be like, okay, before even hearing me talk. And I'm just like, yeah, no, I, I don't talk like that. So like, where is this coming from type of thing? And it's just very interesting to say the least. People who are not of color definitely need to educate themselves and ask those questions of, you know, if you are friends with a person who is of color, I think it's okay to kind of ask like, hey, I've always kind of, or like, even if you haven't always, but you know, you recently thought, hey, I want to kind of talk to you. How can I educate myself to be like more mindful of the things that I say to people of color? And I wouldn't even say it as like to people like you. I don't think that's the right wording. Just say to people of color. And also when you see a black person, I think it's like good to kind of know, not all of us are African-American. I had a friend who was Jamaican and she was like, yeah, when people call me African-American, it's really offensive because I am not African. I am Jamaican. That's a huge difference. And I have been in situations that I'm not gonna like state all of them you guys know about like those two guys stating like oh is it okay for me to call you the n-word that's not even the worst thing that someone has said to me and it's also interesting because sometimes people will walk around like you you walk around on the street like i work downtown and i can tell like i can always tell when someone feels uncomfortable around me i feel like it's just People of color experience this every day. I remember my friends, um, we were watching This Is Us and it was on the episode where Randall and his dad were like talking and his dad was like, that like officer is like racist against me or whatever. And Randall was like, it's not that he isn't. Like he's just doing his job. And his dad grew up in a time where like race was 
people would spit at him when they would see him and stuff like that. Like he grew up in that time. So it, like it made sense like why Randall's dad kind of reacted that way. But then Randall like talked about his experience of like, yeah, sometimes when I go into a store that's like really fancy, like security will follow me a little extra. And we watched that episode. I watched it with two friends. We finished that episode and they were like, do you experience this? And I was like, yeah, every single day. And they're like, what? And I was like, yeah, like I experience what Randall talked about in that episode of This Is Us all the time. I feel like if you're born a person of color, you're kind of just born into knowing that like you will face oppression. It's awful to say that because I wish that wasn't the case. I wish that wasn't, I wish that wasn't true. It's honestly like how I feel. I feel like if you are a person of color, you deal with some sort of racism weekly, you know? Or it might not be like all the time, like if you're around people who are just like you every single day, like if I was around like an all, you know, if I was around a black community, I don't think I would deal with that, but I'm not. I'm not surrounded by people who are the exact same as me. I don't have a lot of black friends. It's just the truth. I definitely do think there's, like there's a difference for people, but at the same time, like people of color still experience situations where people say things to them and it's just like, are you being for real right now? Like, why? Or like people try to prove that like they have black friends or they understand black culture and it's just like you don't gotta prove to me like if you like Kendrick Lamar and you're like a legit fan cool but you don't gotta like overextend yourself and be like yeah like I'm just like all about black culture and it's just like you know and that was another thing that I was talking about with my friend too it's just like just because I am black or a person of color doesn't mean that like, I like everything that is black. Isn't this just like a beautiful face? Don't assume that just because I am black means that I know everything there is to know black about black culture and that I like everything there is about being black. Like, just because I am this race doesn't mean that I'm obsessed with everything about this race or this culture. Like people don't realize when they talk to me, I'm actually Spanish. I did say that I'm a black Latino female. My family's from Panama. And I love that culture. And people who are from Central America or Spanish countries, they see me and they know, they're like, oh yeah, she's probably Panamanian. Cause they recognize those features in me. Where other people who are not from those cultures probably don't. Like I remember visiting Panama several times and people being like, oh yeah, she's obviously Panamanian. So we're just gonna speak Spanish to her. And then they realize that like, I don't speak it. And I, the thing is Spanish was my first language. Um, so it is like my native tongue, but I don't speak it anymore. Cause English is hard to learn. I don't know if people know that, but English is like one of the most difficult languages. And it's still hard for me to speak. Um, <laughs> I'll have days where I like say something, like I said almonds and salmon, and apparently it's salmon and almonds. Um, and I was like, oh, I should train myself to say it that way. And I did. And I was like, no, I prefer to just say it my own way. And I noticed that my grandma, she says quinoa and I say quinoa. And I was just like, oh, I should just say it quinoa because like, it's okay to like not say it in such like an American way. Like people who are not from America say it the exact same way. And that's okay. Like I don't have to like pronounce everything so American. Like you will, <laughs> got it on my face you will understand what I'm saying. But like, yeah, I was talking about it with my friend who's Asian and she was just like, yeah, some people think that like, just because I'm Asian, I'm obsessed with everything that there is Asian. Me personally, I love everything that's Asian because I am obsessed with Japanese culture. I love anime. I like reading manga and like eating Asian food, like sushi, um, pad thai, larb is like a new favorite that I'm obsessed with. Um, kimchi, kimchi chige, you know, bibimbap. Like, I, I love 
food from like Asia and Indian food, basmati rice, uh, butter chicken, the curries. Like I love it all. And I just love eating like ethnic foods that are like so different to mine because like in my culture we eat like a lot of fish and rice and frioles, you know, beans type of thing. So, but I was talking to her and she was just like, just because I'm Asian doesn't mean I'm obsessed with everything that there is Asian. And I was like, yeah, I totally get that. Like, I totally understand. I'm not obsessed with everything that's black because people assume that everything that's black is African. And I'm like, I'm not African. I'm Spanish more than anything else. And it's just, it's always very interesting when people try to like put you into these categories. And it's just like, no, I would prefer if you were to just get to know me as a person first before you try to identify myself for me because it's like you don't need to do that for me i can i can do that enough on my own type of thing and so it's just very it's just very interesting when people try to do that to you and it and it can be very frustrating but it's like no you don't have to talk to me about everything about my culture because i might not know everything about my culture and i also don't need like a history lesson or I don't need to be educated about it. Like if you like something, talk about it in a way that you like it, but you don't have to emphasize my race with it, you know? I feel like I covered a lot of, well, I didn't, I don't think I covered everything, but obviously, cause it's such a huge topic. But I think like the main takeaway is that if you are not a person of color or if you don't really understand a race and you're around someone who is of a different race than you, like say if you've never been around someone who's Ethiopian or Korean or, you know, from Yugoslavia, like I think it's okay to just understand, like try to educate yourself on that culture, but not trying to put people in a box within that culture because that's not all those people are. Just like start off with hi and then kind of go from there and you don't have to always bring up their race, their ethnicity, asking where they're from. You know, you could even say like, just like, I would say like if you are in that situation and you are saying something that like is a little bit offensive um, to a person of color and that person of color calls you out, as a person who's not of color, I don't think it is good to react to being like, oh, they're pulling the race card. Like that's no way to receive that. And definitely like people of color can definitely come off as angry because it is upsetting because it's not like, it's something that happens like once, you know, a lifetime. It's something that happens all the time. And it can be frustrating because it's like you're continuously correcting people to not say these things. And I, as a person of color shouldn't have to continuously educate people or correct people. People should just know like, you don't have to come up to me and be like, oh, it's because you're black or you're my token black friend or, and also you don't have to continuously like point it out to me. Like it's so weird when people do that. And I think just both sides, like people of color need to definitely come from a place of not anger, but just saying it in a loving and a kind way and people who are not of color, who are kind of getting corrected, need to accept it in a loving and kind way in return and not be super offended when they are corrected. Because it's just like, put yourselves in their shoes. Do they probably have to do this all the time? Yes. Yes, they do. So I wanted to jump on real quick and say that when a person who is not of color um, gets corrected and says, you're pulling the race card, that is your white privilege speaking. And you're saying that to a person who is of color. I don't think that is fair. Um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to say that. So don't respond and being like, you're pulling the race card because that's white privilege. Like you saying that is white privilege, especially to a person of color and recognize that people of color should be able to stand up for themselves and say what's not okay. <laughs> and not have to joke about it all the time. So just wanted to point that out real quick and hop on there and say that. Also, I understand that not all cops are bad. I get that. So just wanted to jump in real quick and say that. I think it's okay. It's okay to educate yourselves. Just talk to people who are different from you 
and put yourselves in their shoes like mentally and be like, I wonder what it is like for them. Like, I wonder what it is to like walk in their shoes and experience life the way that they do. Like when a black person walks past a cop, are they afraid? I am typically. And I do, there's a cop at my church who's like the best cop ever. Like he's awesome. He's really great. But yeah, I, I think just like both sides need to come from a place that is like loving and kind and understanding and knowing that like, hopefully no one's saying things out of a malicious heart malicious intent because that's when it's hard to like correct people and to say things like that's when it's the most difficult um and frustrating as well um so yeah i i feel like i'm kind of all over the place because it's such a huge topic it's something that i i struggle and kind of deal with like weekly maybe not daily because i don't think about my blackness every single day if you're a person of color who's who's a person who's not of color, don't change the way that you talk to a person of color. I'm not saying to treat them like your white friends, but to treat them as a person and not just like hone in on this like skin tone of difference because it's it doesn't really come off the way that you think it does. Um and also like saying like, "Oh yeah, I'm obsessed with like black culture and I know like this and this and it's just like okay good for you not everyone is obsessed with whatever culture it is that they're obsessed with everyone has different interests and likes and i think that's okay but you don't have to continuously point it out to a person who's in that culture to be like i'm super obsessed and i feel like i've definitely been guilty with this with other races as well and i've been put in my place as well in a loving and kind way but they also like i've also explained like my intent behind what I'm saying and they understand that and we're able to have like a conversation about it instead of you know being like super weird about it so yeah I think that's all I'm gonna say about that hopefully all of that made sense um was helpful in some way or you were able to relate as another person of color regardless of your race but yeah, if you liked any part of this video, please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I do get ready with me's every now and then, and I do like monthly updates on my weight loss journey and some vlogs, some travel vlogs and stuff like that. So subscribe if you want to be, you know, be updated for when I upload videos um, that are kind of just lifestyle. And yeah, hopefully this was an eye-opening conversation and it does spark positive conversation also please leave the comments like nice i'm not trying to come from a place of just being like this is how you do all things wrong because it's not the case i'm just kind of sharing like my experiences and like what i've gone through and what i think is not okay to say to a black person while also getting ready with me and sharing favorite products that i like so it's all in love yeah i hope you guys stay kind stay true and stay laughing and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, man. Let the setting dry. Okay. Came out cute. Can you see it? That was just now. That is cute. I like that. In my still venture. Thank you.